Dan Channel, President of Bunker Up Fishing. I'm here today to show you how to assemble and operate your sandblasting baitcaster. Alright, what you have here is your sandblasting baitcaster chamber. That's going to hold the air, which is going to allow you to cast your bait. In the box also comes the leg parts that you're going to adapt to the air chamber. You also have a sand rig holder that's going to hold your rigs at the end. You have a barrel which is going to be connected to this unit and that's going to allow you to launch your bait out to the ocean. You also have a compressor, a nice heavy duty little compressor that's going to charge your system up and let you get the desired pressure to launch the bait. Alright, first off we're going to, oh, don't want to forget the bunker up fishing rig. That's our 10 ounce sinker. You're going to get six of these along in the pack. So check the box, make sure you got six. If you don't have six, you give me a call, I'll send you some. All right, let's go over a basic assembly. We have, right now we have the tank. How we want to put it together first off, we're going to slide these to the side a little bit. What we want to do first is we want to put the leg parts in first, okay? So you're going to take your leg part with the foot, with the padded foot on it. You're going to slide it into the receiver, tighten that up like so. Make sure it's good and snug. All right. And you're going to take your other leg part. We're going to slide that into the other receiver on the other side. If it doesn't go in, just wait a little, little bit. As soon as you have that in, tighten that up. Now you got your two leg parts together. Okay. You're going to drop back. You're going to grab your your stabilizer leg, this, this is for your trajectory on the back end of the caster. This is going to allow you to stabilize the caster and also to go up and down in case you've got a windy condition day where you want to shoot more directly into the, into the breach. So it slides up and down like that. You can just adjust the trajectory on there. Right now we're going to leave it around like that so we can put the barrel on and the front stabilizer. Alright, we take this. This is going to be your barrel support. This is going to slide into the receiver in the front. Always keep this loose until you put your barrel on. You're going to unwind the belt up, like so. Take off your cap. This keeps your valve clean and protected in case you've got the windy conditions on the beach and you're not utilizing the cap. You might want to take the barrel off. You can put this in there. It keeps all the sand and the salt out of the chamber in here. Um, we got your barrel. You're going to then take your barrel and just gently lay it into the forearm here. That's going to allow it to slide in nice and easy where you just twist it. And again, you don't want to tighten this until you get this twisted in. Because if you do that, you might be cross threading it and cause a problem. You don't want to rip the threads off. So you want to tighten that up like that. As soon as you get it to where you have about four or five turns inside the brass ball valve, you want to stop. Come up here, position your Velcro to wrap it around the barrel, like so, nice and snug. Boom. Okay. Now, all you have left is your rod holder parts. Alright, this one's going to be for the back of the rod. You put that in here. Slide that down. This is going to hold the front of your rod, or the, the shaft of your rod, right above your reel. Slide that down. Now, to make sure you're in the right position, you want to grab your rod, lay it in there, like so. Okay, we have to drop this down a little bit because we have a short ceiling in the bunker. So we're going to just drop this down a little bit here, drop this down here. You want to keep these even, you want to keep the front support up just a little bit higher than the back support, just to keep your rod tip up. Alright, we'll slide that in like so. Like I said, if you drop the back one down, that's going to keep it nice and even with the barrel. You want to keep that up a little bit, like I said. This is your line stay. This is on the barrel. This is going to allow you to, when you open your bale, you can tuck this in right here without having to hold the line to your fingers, which is key. You don't want to be holding your fingers anywhere near this. You want to be back here doing everything. When you pull the pin, everything that happens, you want it to happen in front of you. Okay? Um, on the rod itself, we also, in the box comes two shock leaders. You get shock leaders. This is a 90 pound steel leader. This is going to 
slide down the barrel with the bait. Now what this does is accounts for the shock that's going out of there because it's going out of there at a high speed. So when the when the ice bait is flying down the tube, it's going to vibrate a little bit, and, and this allows it to take that little bit of punishment. These will last anywhere from 20 to 30 casts before you have to change them. Okay, this is going to be the length of the barrel plus a little bit more. All right, so you always want it to hang out a little bit because you don't want your swivel to be in the barrel when you're launching your bait. So I always make these about a foot or two longer than the barrel. So the, the swivel is actually drooping down in front of the barrel, which is what you want. On the other end of the shock leader, you have the swivel with a split ring, okay? What you're gonna need is a pair of split ring pliers, which you're gonna clip onto that. Now this is where you connect your bait. I have a simulated bait here we made out of ice, I mean out of epoxy, just to simulate the ice on what this looks like when it comes out. Alright, it's shaped like that, it's got the weight forward, now what you're going to do is you're going to clip this, this right onto the tube, as it's in the tube. You don't want to pull the bait out of the tube first, you want to leave the ice in the tube when you're clipping it on, so that gives you something to grab onto. If you pull this out first, then you've got to a piece of ice in your hand and it's melting and you're trying to clip it on and that's just going to create a problem. So leave the bait in the tube, clip it onto the swivel that's sticking out of the back. And once that's connected, then when it starts to melt a little bit, you pull it out. Now what you have is essentially an ice mold with a weight forward with your bait in it. Okay, now that you have your bait connected to your shock leader, uh, you're going to want to pull it out. Now just remember that the, the bait mold itself is tapered on the inside, so like a popsicle, it's going to come out when it's ready. It's going to take a little bit of uh, heat from the sun in your hand, you can warm it up a little bit, but uh, as soon as that warms up a little bit, it's going to break that seal on the inside, it's going to allow you to pull it out. You don't want to force it out. You can use a pair of pliers. I like to get the plier in the swivel a little bit, just to get a little bit of tweak sometimes to get it started, and then grab the leader or leave the pliers in the swivel and just use the pliers to pull it out. Don't force it, you can rip the swivel, you can damage the leader, and then you have a mess, you have to rehook another bait, it's a waste. So, once you get that to where you can pull it out, you want to pull it out, now you want to slide everything down that tube behind the bait. You want to make sure that the swivel and the shock leader goes down first, then you slide that bait down. Just like that. Once you get the one side hits the inside of the tube and it's melting in your hand a little bit, don't you know? Don't be afraid of that. Just get that thing in there. As it's like I said, that's going to lubricate the barrel. It's going to go down, and uh, once it hits the bottom, you're ready to go. That's going to slide down like this. Um, a lot of times we like to use chum, and uh, it fibers it up a little bit and makes it uh, the bait a little stickier. So when you're sticking it in the barrel, it might not slide down. So you can. You know, we like to use a ramrod, we use a piece of PVC about three quarters of an inch to an inch, about seven feet long, you get it to right on the tip of the, the mold, it's going to push it down real nice. That way you don't waste any time, get it down there fast, you want to get it out there fast. You know, the, the bait mold itself is specifically designed to go down the tube and fit with the shock leader, so you eliminate the blow-by by getting it down there fast and not allowing it to melt in the chamber. Once it gets down there, you're going to drop back here. Pull, well, first of, first of all, you're going to open your barrel and then drop down here, pull the pin, throw the lever, and away she goes. And, uh, you know, you're going to, depending on how fast you throw the lever, it's going to average 200 to 300 yards. Well, 250 is our average, but you can reach up to 300 yards with, uh, you know, the right wind conditions and uh, the right pressure. So, heavy duty little slime compressor. It's got a good connection on it. You, uh, you, all you're going to do is connect it into the inlet valve on this side of the tank. You can't see it right now, but uh, I'll, I'm going to post some pictures on the website of, of the inlet valve on the other side. So what you do is you unscrew this and screw this on. Now the compressor comes with a cigarette lighter connection. What I we do, we like to cut that because what this does is it creates a lot of heat in your truck, you draw on your battery, you don't want to do that when you're in the beach because you can, you know, kill your battery and then you're stuck out in the beach. So what we do is we, we get a little garden tractor battery like this, okay, we hook it direct, cut this off, off of course, hook it direct to that, and what you're going to do is just hit the switch, 
Make sure the valve's on. Make sure your safety is on, on here. We're going to go over the safety instructions before we fire this. Okay, so then we just hit that. As that's charging, it's going to take two to three minutes to get out the desired pressure, which is about eight pounds. Alright? We're not going to wait for that. We're just going to shut that down. But as soon as that gets up to 80 pounds, you'll watch the gauge here. It'll go up to 80. If you forget you're pumping it up, we have a blow-off on here. It's a 100-pound blow-off. That'll blow off about 100 pounds. So if you're walking around talking to somebody while you're charging this unit, you don't have to worry about it. It'll just blow off and wake you up. All right? We're going to shut that down. Now, once we're done shutting that down, we want to shut the inlet valve down. So that make sure it maintains all the pressure in the tank. You don't have to disconnect this unless you're going to walk it down to the ocean where you would want to get more distance, okay? Which we like to do. You could always put a quick connect on here too and change that, that uh, quick connect to a quick connect on the tank. All right, once the caster is full of air, you're ready to go. So that's when you want to pull your bait out. You don't want to pull your bait out while you're pumping it up because if you're in a hot condition, you're pumping it up, you got to wait to pump it up, the thing could be melting and then you're going to lose distance because you're going to lose uh, the diameter of the ice which is specifically designed to fill the barrel which is going to give you maximum distance when it, when it flows out. So, you want to pump it up first and then you want to connect to your bait. So you're going to connect to your bait, you're going to slide this down backwards, make sure you put all the hardware down first, push it down to the bottom, it's in the chamber, now when it's down in here like this, you're going to drop back here and you're going to pull your safety, which is this red button right here, that's just holding the, the lever from not going forward while you're doing everything you need to load it. What you do then is you adjust your trajectory, which way you want to shoot it. You open your bail, you put your line in your line stay, okay? Drop back here, pull the pin, and you throw this lever fast as you can. You want to throw that thing fast because the faster you open that chamber, the more velocity you're going to have on your bait. If you go like this and you give it a little, you know, half throw, it's only going to bloop the bait out there maybe 100 yards. If you give it a nice quick jerk, you're going to, you're going to go 250 to 300 yards. It's not about pressure and force, it's about speed. Okay, you want to fast and just punch it, punch it back. You don't want to jam it forward and constantly put you because you're going to do damage to the valve, the handle. I mean it's made out of stainless but it can only take so much when you're when you're doing that over and over again. So you have to bend it back which you don't want to do. So what you want to do is grab that handle securely, pull the safety back, make sure nobody's in your way, there's no surfers, there's nobody out there, no boners, and boom, fire away. As soon as you fire that thing, it's going to rip this line off of this reel like you wouldn't believe. Okay? What happens then is, as it's coming off and you see it starting to come down, you're going to want to pick your rod out of the rod holder that's on the caster and start to reel down your slack as fast as you can. Because what you want to do is you want to get all that line out because you don't want that flopping around in the ocean. That's going to create drag on your bait and it's just going to put your rod in a position where it's going to start moving your bait down the beach. And you don't want to, want to do that. You've gone through all this to get it out there. You want to leave it out there. So I reel up all the slack I can right away. And then when I'm done with that, I set my drag to a nice loose drag. I use circle hooks. We don't like to hook the fish deep down in his throat. So what we do is we allow our sinker to set the hook. Being that we have this nice heavy sinker, when a fish picks up that weight, he's automatically setting the hook. So your drag doesn't have to be set super tight to do that. Let it nice and loose because when he hits it, the braid has no line, you have no stretch, you have 300 yards of line out there. Now, with all that happening, it doesn't. If you ever get a big shark on, he wants to rip that that line. You have 300 yards of line. It doesn't take a lot of pressure for him to snap that line. So you don't want his initial burst to be to snap the line because your drag is too tight. So you want to leave that nice and nice and loose, just so you it can pull out like that. Now you take it out. You put it in your rod holder. After you've done that, you can just you can. That's which is going to take about two to three minutes. You can start jacking it back up, set your safety, re-engage your airline, open up your, your, for your tank, hit the button, start pumping it up again, you're going to be ready for your next shot, okay? Um, as far as the bullets, um, the bait molds are concerned, we're going to go over that right now real quick on how to load these, okay? So, what you have here is basically 
You're going to get six of these with a clip. All right? And you got your clip. Your clip has little tabs on it. All right? And it's tabs you're going to want to keep up. And these are your bait molds. They have little feet on the bottom. It keeps them nice and stable in your refrigerator. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to pop these in here. And make sure when you're popping them in at the rim, rim of the clip, the, the bait mold goes right under the, um, the, the bottom of the clip. So that's going to lock that in. You just do the same procedure right around. Boom. So essentially what you have is it looks like a little six shooter clip. Okay. And all the tabs are locked in. That's going to keep it upright in your refrigerator. You're not going to have to worry about it dumping over. You got bait, you got stinky bait, whatever you got in there, it's not going to get in your freezer. Okay, um, now when you're loading it, you're going to also get, I'm going to take this rod out of here right now just to give you a little bit more room. Since we know how to do that, you don't need that anymore. Okay, now when you're going to load your baits, you want to drop this down inside here. Okay. And when you make your rig, we're going to go over that on the next, next part of the video on how to make a rig. But what you want to do is always make your rig so your swivel is just above the rim of the bait mold. Okay? Now, when you drop that in there, the reason for that is you're going to want to tee that off with like a finishing nail or a toothpick or whatever you have handy. And you could also use that to, to push into your bait if you have a large bait in the mold. Okay? But for, for now, that just kind of keeps your swivel to the side while you're loading your bait. So what you do then is you grab your fish, your head, or your chunk of bait, or whatever you have, you hook it into there, and you slide that down inside there, always making sure you put, put tuck in the rest of the, the wire that's sticking out, and then slide that to the center, all right? You're going to repeat that process six times. And what you're going to have is six moles that are going to be full of bait. Now. You could use chum or water, whatever you like to use. Um, we like to grind up chum sometimes. That gives the water a little bit more fiber, which allows it to stay frozen longer. But you can always use water. All you have to do is dump the water into the tube. Okay. And what you want to do is you want to fill that up so it's one inch away from the top. As soon as it gets about an inch away from the top, you want to allow for expansion. If you, do, if you fill it up to the top, what's going to happen is it's going to overflow, and then even though the swivel is going to be sticking out, you're going to clip on it and try to stuff it down the barrel, and it's going to be bigger than the inside diameter of the barrel. So you want to stay away from that. If you do not overflow the tube, no matter what's in that tube, it's going to slide down that barrel. The minute it starts to mushroom over, you're going to have a problem. You have to chip the ice away. Okay? But if you leave it an inch from the top, that'll allow for the expansion to come up and do everything it has to do and still remain below the, the rim of the mold. Alright, like I said, you repeat that process three times or six times, you pick it up, put it in your freezer overnight, jack up your freezer as tight, I mean, as, as, as high as it can go because you want the maximum freezing on these baits. Alright, the next day you're going to go to your refrigerator, your freezer, you're going to pull these things out before you go fishing. I always do that the last, the last minute. I load my truck, I do everything I need to do before I pull my baits out of the freezer because that just allows them to stay harder and longer on the beach. Now we're going to go over how to keep your baits nice and cold on the beach because you don't want to ruin your fishing trip, you want to make sure you have a good time, and you want to fish all day. Alright, say you have 18 baits, we froze 18 baits, now we're putting the 18 baits into the cooler, okay? What we're going to do is I'll, I'll pull this cooler up on here just to make it a little bit easier to see. Okay? And you see they're stacked like logs. That's what you're going to want to do. You want to stack these things side by side on top of one another and flip flop them so they keep each other cold. That's the key. You want all your baits in there to be locked in as tight as possible. That's going to keep all the cold air in one spot. And it's going to be like a big block of ice in there. Alright? And we got 18 baits in there. What we're going to do then is we're going to I like to cut a piece of plastic or, or uh, uh, rubber or uh, real good stiff cardboard, something to just keep the air down, the cold air right on the bullets. All right. Then what we can do, we take ice packs, and what you don't want to do is you don't want to put a bag of ice in there or just loose ice in there because what that does is that's going to start to melt every time you open the cooler that's going to drip water down into the molds 
and it's going to make them thaw out faster. You want to keep everything nice and dry. So you can put a towel in here and then put these on, but you have to put something between the bait and the and the, the, the ice packs or the ice that's going to be on top of it to keep them cool. Because what this does is now when you have that on the top of the cooler, every time you open the cooler, if you don't have that, you're going to be shutting hot air into the cooler. And what that's going to do is going to defrost your base faster. If you have this, every time you shut the cooler, you're going to shut it and it's going to blow that hot air out and that cool air is going to stay in there. That's going to allow your baits to stay uh, hard for a long, long time. You could fish all day. I've already, we've already fished out there 96 degrees with 18 baits in a cooler like this and fished all day. So if you do the right things, you make sure the cooler is shut all the time. You got to push that thing down. You don't want it to leave it open because it's going hot air and you're going to have problems. All right. So we basically went over the cooler, how to keep your baits cold. Now we're going to go over the sand main holder. All right. Now this is something we designed. Uh, it's a very unique device. We're going to start selling these in the bait shops as well, uh, along with the casters on the side. And for anyone that just wants to use something to keep their rigs straight, I've always run into a problem when we're out there fishing that after you're done with your rigs, you're throwing them in a bucket, you're throwing them in your tackle box, you're getting all wound up, so you have to untangle. I came up with this design because of what we were doing and we had those massive weights and the big hooks so I had to keep them um, stabilized and secure and this is what the result of it was. Um, we also utilize the same clear plastic as the barrel so what you do is you, you put this into the sand and then you're going to hook your rigs on after you take them out. Say you catch a fish, now you have to disconnect that rig from your shock leader which is going to be on the end of your rod. Okay, so you're going to disconnect that part after you catch a fish or if you don't catch a fish and you have a, a hook with no bait on it, you're just going to disconnect the, the split ring and what you're going to have left is another rig here. Well, you're going to have just a plain rig, you're going to hook it on here and then you're going to wrap the velcro around here. At the end of the day, you don't do this till you're ready to go. Just keep them all hanging on there and then you put the one around the top and the two around the sinkers. When you go home, everything's nice and neat. You wash it down. When you get back to your house, you can just unravel them, put them back in the tubes, freeze them back up, and away you go. So, um, I think we pretty much went over everything as far as assembly, um, loading, the, loading the bullets, loading the, the bait molds, uh, and uh, air compressor wise so other than that let's just go fishing I'd like to thank uh, first of all before I go anyway I'd like to thank my man Hunter who made me this awesome shirt and uh, we'll see you on the beach next weekend so any questions you can also call me at 609-903-4737 or dan at bunkerupfishing.com and I can walk you through any of these procedures